Today we're going to be making some meals with pantry staples, things that you might already have on hand, things that we definitely almost always have on hand. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that it cuts down on your cost hugely. Using what you already have obviously cuts the cost, but also a lot of pantry staples you can get on sale. You can stock up when they're on sale. You can even sometimes find them in a case lot sale. If they're going to be in things that you make regularly, mm -hmm. then it is worth it to buy them by the case. Absolutely. We are sharing this with you today because this is also in our pantry freezer stack which is a meal plan that includes the recipes, the shopping list, the prep list, and printable labels, which are super, super handy. And this particular one also includes our pantry staples printable checklist, which is so nice to have on hand because then you can make sure that you stock all these things and you can check off if you need them. And this is just a handy little cheat sheet. It is. And this particular pantry staples cheat sheet has been built off of our most popular recipes. I went through and kind of inventoried all of the ingredients that we have for all of our recipes so I could get a good idea for how to make the cheat sheet. And if you have these things in your pantry, you should be able to make a lot of our recipes and any recipes really with the ones that are on here. So if you're looking to cut down on your grocery costs because you're feeling the pinch from those rising grocery costs, then you can grab this pantry staples freezer stack as well as some of our other most frugal meal plans right now in our frugal fall bundle sale. The link for that is gonna be below. It is a great way to get you started in cutting down your grocery costs, but the better way and the more long-term way is to join our Freezer Meals 101 Club, and right now there is a sale. And it hardly ever goes on sale, so we are really excited to share this with you. That means you have to go to the link in the description below, click on it now before the sale goes away. Grab it now because that is the number one way to save on your grocery costs. Our members have noticed that their grocery costs have come down considerably since they started. Some of them 200 to 300 dollars a month and that's for like a family of four. If you were feeding more than that you can cut it even more. We're talking thousands a year simply by making freezer meals, planning a little bit ahead and using the club to facilitate and optimize those sales. So let's get right into our first recipe because you don't need to sacrifice taste just because you're shopping out of your pantry. We're going to do these in the order that they are in the PDF because in case you already have your pantry staples freezer stack and you are cooking along with us, we want you to be able to follow along. So the first recipe is our corn chowder. This is seriously like... It's a classic for It's us. the classic for us. It is in our repertoire regularly. We sometimes even make it in between our mega sessions because we love it so much. It is simple to, to put together. We do really always have these things in our pantry, so it's easy to put together and it's delicious. I could serve this to anybody and be so glad that I have this beautiful soup to just throw in the slow cooker and it's really great to pull out on short notice. So for this, you can either make it in a freezer bag or if you're us and you're quadrupling or octupling, oh, eight timesing Sometimes recipe, we do. then you're gonna wanna make it in a giant bowl. When we do it in, when we do eight of them, we do it in two batches. Right. Because we cannot fit eight of these in, in I don't have in, a you don't, There isn't enough. a bowl big enough unless you're in a commercial kitchen that could make Even eight. Even then, I don't think <laughs> there's a bowl big enough on this planet to uh. fit eight of this soup. But if you're wanting to, you can do this just into a freezer bag if you're making one batch. We're gonna do ours quadrupled, so we're gonna do it in a large bowl. So you're gonna add some chopped onion, kernel corn, cream corn, a can of evaporated milk, some cream of mushroom soup, chicken broth, and some cooked and crumbled bacon. 
If you're doing it in your bag, then you're gonna squish it in your bag to combine it. If you're doing it in a bowl, then you're gonna stir it in the bowl. Then you're gonna get out as much air as you can because when you're freezer cooking, that air causes freezer burn and you're gonna seal it and get it in your freezer. Now, it can be helpful to put your bag in a juice jug to hold it open because this is a soup and it's pretty... Soupy. Liquidy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and so it can be it can be handy to do that, to hold your bag open. I or, recommend to do it with a friend. Yes, your friend can hold the bag open for you and freezer meals just are easier with a friend. They're much more fun, certainly. And this is one that because we make it so often, every time there is a case lot sale on cream corn, kernel corn, evaporated milk, chicken broth, we grab those ingredients in the case lot sale. So we literally always, always have everything for this soup. Even bacon, because I keep mine in my freezer when I'm able to find that on sale. So mm -hmm. seriously, we have everything for this all the time. And this is an easy one to remember because it's a can, a can, a can, a can. But we do want to buy it in the case lot sale because we're using four cans, four cans, four cans, four cans, eight cans, eight cans. And I have to tell you, when we do make this one and we do the big, big batch of it, my son loves to be the one to be here to help because he likes to run the can opener. We it's like a power tool. We have yeah. an electric can opener and to save our wrists because that's a lot of cans. And it really is funny because he likes us to wait until he's like home from school so that he can make that one with us. <laughs> it's like a power tool. It's cute. It is cute. And this can be heated in your slow cooker or just a stovetop pot. It's just a quick reheat. so. Super easy. I like to serve it with crackers or with a bun or with cornbread or with homemade biscuits. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean like baking powder biscuits, not like cookies. This easy taco salad is a wonderful recipe to have in your freezer because all it requires after the fact is going to be some romaine lettuce that you can pick up that day or that week when you know you're going to be making this. And it really is just a delightful recipe that bam, can be into something super healthy right out of your pantry. You're going to add your ground beef that has been cooked and cooled. You're going to add in some chili powder, some minced garlic, we use ours right from a jar. And we're going to add in a can of kidney beans that have been rinsed and drained and a cup of salsa. That is it. You can mix this around right in your bag. You can save yourself some dishes without putting it in a bowl. Like Sharla said earlier, we want to get that excess air out of the bag. We're going to seal it up and freeze it. This is something that you can defrost quickly because it's quite a thin bag. You can heat it up quickly in a skillet. You're going to serve this mixture over lettuce. You could also add in some more taco fixings like some sliced green onions, some chopped purple onion. Here's where the cheese comes in if you want. You could add some taco sauce or some more salsa. Sour cream, the sky's the limit. If you put it on a taco, you can put it on a taco salad. And I do like to crunch up my taco chips too and put it on. Do you remember back in the 80s when taco salads were all the rage and you could get that tortilla that had been deep fried into a bowl shape? Yes. Yes, you could buy those. Yeah, like you could. you could go to the store. I wonder if you still can. I don't know, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them for a really long time, but you could totally do that, yeah. I always like to have avocado in mine. Mm. I just feel like it makes it really fancy. Very fancy <laughs> and very fresh. Yes. And it's healthy for you. These Dr. Pepper baked beans are already a super frugal recipe, but there is a way to make them even more frugal because these do call for bacon, which since you're already using some bacon for the corn chowder, it just makes sense that you would use the rest and put it in these baked beans and then you've used up all your bacon. But if you're making these on your own or the bacon was really expensive and you want to make these even more frugally, then you can skip adding the bacon and you can instead add cans of baked beans that already have bacon in them. Mm -hmm. And that's even more inexpensive. Now, I always get my baked beans in a case lot sale. Not much of a surprise there because we've got an amazing cowboy baked beans recipe mm -hmm. that is super good. And so between this recipe and the cowboy baked beans and I've got a couple of kids that just like to snack on baked beans, I go through them pretty quickly. So 
Getting them in the case slot saves me even more money. Into your freezer bag, you're going to add some canned baked beans. Again, if you want to, you can add them with the bacon already in. If you haven't, you can then add some cooked and crumbled bacon, chopped onion, a little bit of brown sugar, and some Dr. Peppers. So you're going to squish all those things together in your bag, get your air out, seal it, and freeze it. Now for this one, you can bake it in your oven. You could just heat this on in a stovetop pot. This is going to be really fast because the bacon's already cooked. If you used bacon, if you used beans without bacon and didn't add the bacon, this could be a vegetarian dish or it would make a really nice side. What would be a pantry challenge or a pantry freezer stack without a soup recipe that is just straight up cans? This is called the seven can soup and you couldn't, and it couldn't be more simple. Yes, it's even more simple than the corn chowder. We're going to add into our bag black beans, kidney beans, kernel corn. Now I'm going to say this, if you want to rinse them, you can, but because you're making a soup, you can skip the rinsing of the kidney beans and the black beans. That is entirely up to you. You're going to add in chicken broth, diced tomatoes, green chilies, enchilada sauce, and some taco seasoning. You can add in a can of chicken um, or you could chop up some chicken or you could just totally leave it like this. And the other thing you can consider doing is that chicken broth, it fills the bag up. If you have a very full freezer or you have a very small freezer, we often recommend that you go ahead and leave the chicken broth in your pantry and skip that for the recipe and add it at the time that you go to cook this. So, But make a note on your bag to remind yourself to do that. Yes, please make a note on your bag because I know that when we are making large amounts, we um, forget those little notes for ourselves. It, and we call each other or text each other and say, hey, do you remember when did we, we put it in the chicken taco soup? Did we, yeah, did we add it or are we supposed to add it now? Because some of them, it's hard to tell if they're soup. This one's pretty saucy already, so it might be hard to remember if you added it. So please make the note on your recipe label right then so that you know. And if you have a family where you want to add it in on the day of and you think it might disappear. I don't know who's going around in families eating, drinking chicken <laughs> broth on its own, but you know, sometimes that happens. Um, maybe it's best to just add it in and be done if you think you might not have any by the time you go to make this. So it's entirely up to you. Do what works for you, but you can do it either way. Just letting you know. So we're going to get that excess air out. We're going to seal it up and freeze it on the day you go to cook this. If you need to add your chicken broth, you can, if it's already in there, you just, Thaw it, throw it in a stovetop pot, or again, this is good for the slow cooker. This, everything in here is already cooked. You just need to bring it up to temperature and let those flavors mingle. This is healthy, this is flavorful, and this is simple. Earlier, we were telling you about the Freezer Meals 101 Club. We just kind of glossed over that and said, hey, it's on sale, go check it out. For those of you that don't know what it is and are wondering like, how can this save me money? It is our uh, brainchild. <laughs> it's her brainchild. We've been making freezer meals together for a very long time. Over 12 years, we have made over 6,000 recipes meals, we figure. And we have been doing this for a long time. So we got very good at this. And people would look at our freezers like, okay, we would maybe gloat a little bit. <laughs> and we would open up our freezer door and see it stacked to the roof. And they would say, how do you do this? How can you do this? And they imagine the free time that they would have if they could just pull out a meal, the money they would save if they could get a case lot and find their coupons and get their discounts and make the most of it the mental load that they would be saving by not having to think about what you're going to make for supper every day. They wanted to know, how do you do that? How do, so we were thinking like, how do we get this into the hands of people? Because you know what, this is only five recipes, but it can be a lot of work to sit and you know, make your grocery list and to make your prep list and to put all of that together. So Sharla, she's been a blogger for years and years, had this brainchild where she put this club together where you can do this. All of the recipes that are in this pantry staples freezer stack are also in the club. 
But so are 400 other recipes. So are 400 other recipes. We, like I said, we've been doing this a while. You can make your own meal plan. You could call this Christie's Camping Weekend and you want to make four recipes. Maybe you want a lunch, maybe you want an appetizer because you're going to meet up with your sister-in-law at their campsite and have an appetizer night. If you want to make that all ahead and get it into your freezer and take it camping with you, things that can be made over a campfire. Yes, we have them. We even have a camping freezer stack. Or things that you want to have as appetizers, have as breakfasts, have as lunches and dinners while you are camping, you can make a meal plan called Christie's Camping and select your meals and you push a button and it will tell you what your shopping list is. It will tell you what your prep list is. It will even get you printable labels that you can make just like this, that you can peel and stick and put on your, on your meals just like we do. So that have the cooking instructions. It has the, the cooking date, instructions. All the things. And so you really could be just like us. You could be saving money. You could be saving time. You could be saving that mental load with 400 recipes, not just five that you may or may not want to double. In the club, if you want to double them, you can adjust the serving size. If it serves four, you make it serve eight, and it will also tell you how much to buy if you wanted to double that recipe. It's kind of brilliant. It's like pretty brilliant. And then we <laughs> Now we're gloating it. about that. We are gloating. Oh, weird. <laughs> we love the club. We love our club, and our club members love the club. And we love our club members so much that we decided we wanted to spend more time with them. <laughs> And so now we've added a monthly live cooking class so that once a month we get to hang out with our club members, cook right with them where they're in their kitchens cooking while we're in ours assembling things. And we also show in that live cooking class how to make those meals for a family or how to make that if there's just one or two of you because there's adaptations that you have to do if you're cooking for less people. So that's been a really fun addition. And they get to talk to us while we do it and we will answer questions. And actually that part is really, really fun. We've enjoyed hanging out with them, but the reason that we added that is because we had people that were in the club and saying, hey, this is easy to use and everything, but I'm still not using it because I don't know where to start. Or I feel like I need somebody to hold my hand and help me take that first step. And the live cooking class is where we literally are holding your hand. So there's no excuses. If you join the club, you will be cooking like this in no time. And sometimes people say things like, oh, but it's freezer meals. They aren't fresh. Like everything here is out of a can. Not everything is like this. This is a pantry staples selection. Um, trust me though, they do taste good or they would not be in the club. We will not subject you to something that we won't eat ourselves. There is one exception. It is the cranberry chicken. And people it love it. Club because it has a five star rating. People adore this recipe. We don't personally like it, but everything else in there we like, and there are foodie recipes in there in case you are thinking it's all pantry type stuff. I did mention the appetizers for camping, didn't I? Well, you can, Charlotte recently threw me a birthday party. Well, recently, it was a while ago now. Threw me a birthday party out of her freezer because she had appetizers in there. She's a bit of an appetizer queen anyway, but she just pulled it out and threw me a birthday party like it was nobody's business in one day because she knew like, well, I have this, I have this, I have this, I have these new meatballs that we're gonna try. I think they're gonna be good for an appetizer, so we'll try them out. Everybody loved everything, it was delicious. We had like bacon wrap, blue cheese stuff dates. And like, <laughs> I am not even kidding. There is, there is restaurant quality food in this club. Now, if you don't believe us or if you really wanna vet us, go to our website, freezermeals101.com, our recipes are there for free. You absolutely have access to them. We are not making you pay to access the recipes. There is a fee if you want to access the system. So go check out the recipes. Jump now on the system because we are offering such a great deal on it. Yeah, and make it so that you don't have to think about dinner again because that is like, we often say that there isn't much in our lives that we sort of have together. <laughs> 
you know, I, I personally, I'm not going to speak for Christy here, but I personally am a bit of a mess. Like, you know how there, there was that hot mess expression going around a while ago? Yeah. Like, that describes me well. Sometimes she's a bit of a hot mess. Uh, sometimes my life is a hot mess. The one area where we do have it together is freezer meals, is, is food, what we're eating for dinner. We have got that down and we can impress guests. And on, like Christy was saying, on a moment's notice, we can be like, here is your gourmet three course meal. <laughs> you really can. And I'll tell you, this next recipe we're gonna show you right now can feed a crowd. It is a huge recipe and you will not believe that it comes from your pantry. This is our chili casserole. And while this is not going to win any awards like some of the recipes in the club would, it's just hearty, family friendly, and like Christy said, you're going to be shocked that this can come out of your pantry. Now you do need some ground beef for this, which doesn't come out of your pantry, but if you're able to find it on sale, then this one is super frugal. Into your bag, you're going to add your browned and cooled ground beef, some minced onion, diced tomatoes, green chilies, water, salt, pepper, you can add kernel corn to this if you want, or you can skip it. And then you're going to mix that all together in your bag in a separate quart size freezer bag. You're gonna add a cup of long grain rice that is uncooked. You're gonna staple those bags together above the seam so that you have everything that you need for the day of cooking. When you go to make this, you're gonna thaw it and you're gonna add your large bag contents into a casserole dish and you're gonna stir in that uncooked rice. It's going to bake up right in here. The key to making the rice bake up in here is to cover it. So you're gonna bake it covered for an hour and then if you want to, you can sprinkle some cheese on top or you can eat this as is. It is just seriously just one of those like family weeknight meals that is so fast and easy to get dinner on the table. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you managed to cook along with us because you already had all of these things in your pantry, we hope that you enjoy your meals and that you enjoy the freedom that freezer cooking comes with. If you like that idea, please, please, please go check out the club. It is on sale right now. You have to go right now and catch that amazing deal. Thank you for being here today and happy cooking. Bye.